Hey, Nick. Um, I was actually asking Mike this question. I mean, you guys get a chance to play some of the top teams in the Big Ten East in the, in the first few weeks, um, Penn State, Michigan, in the first three. Um, those were games that Michael didn't have a chance to play in last year. I mean, missed Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan. Um, if Michael's the quarterback, you know, you've seen from last year and he improves to the quarterback you expect him to be, how much of a difference can he make, do you think, in games like that? Well, I think, um, you know, those are great challenges and great opportunities for the entire team, you know, and certainly I think Michael looks forward to that competition. Um, you know, th those are obviously is pretty well documented how, how tough and stiff that competition is in those games, as it is for all of the games that we're going to be playing this year. So I think the opportunity is – is uh, maybe never been greater, you know, honestly, because of the, the difficulty of the schedule. And it's really how you embrace it and look forward to the competition. And that's the reason why you coach and play in the Big Ten. So um, I think it, Mike's no different than the other guys. I think everybody's excited for the opportunities that are ahead. Um, certainly our focus and attention right now is just on – we put pads on for the first time today. So, um, you know, we got a long ways to go, not a ton of time. But uh, I know everybody's excited about the opportunities that lay ahead. All right, Tom, then Kevin. Hey, Nick, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, you know, with this being uh, first go round as the, as the OC and such, um, how has it been for you every day in regards to the learning process yourself and the, and the getting through each day and what to expect the next day? And, and uh, obviously you just mentioned this narrow window we sort of have before game day is to, you know, getting everything ramped up and being ready to go by October 24th. Yeah, certainly. Um... For most everybody, it's been a little bit of an unconventional year, you know, without a doubt, you know. Um, but we just taking it one day at a time, you know. You, it's hard. The, the challenge for the coaches has been it's been somewhat difficult to plan too far ahead, you know. And so you, um, I think the ability to adjust and adapt and uh, be flexible um, will serve us well because we have a coaching staff that's you know ready to pivot and and alter the plan to best help our players. So. Um, I'm having a blast because of the staff that I get to work with and the players that we get to coach. Um, and we're taking it one day at a time. So um, I've enjoyed it. And, um, you know, looking forward to watching the practice film today with the staff and finding ways to get better and help our players and get a chance to be with them again tomorrow. So I think the thing that I've enjoyed the most is the interaction with the players, which certainly we missed for a long time. You know, that, that was um, – I just, I love being around the guys, coaches and players. You know, that's part of why I coach to be a part of the team. So um, it's just great to be back with the team, you know. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much how it's been here the last couple of weeks. So, but it's going good. Thank you, Nick. All right, Kevin, then Zach. Your um, coach, your, your relationship with uh, Mike, how, how has it kind of grown? Uh, through the pandemic, through kind of uh, all the ups and downs that uh, I guess uh, that, that you and the team have had to deal with. And um, how is he grasping uh, kind of the, the playbook? I know it's somewhat similar to Coach DeBoer, but there are a few different wrinkles. Sure. I think the one, one of, um, you know, I think Michael's obviously a very talented player. Um, I think one of Michael's biggest strengths as a player is the game is slow for Mike. Um, he makes quick decisions. He's able to see the field. It doesn't take him long to grasp concepts. Um, and I credit, you know, his upbringing, the people that have helped him along the way, um, you know, coaches, trainers, parents. Um, it just – he just has always seen the game very naturally. Um, and so, you know, our relationship is – dates back a few years, as you guys know at this point. You know, we've known each other for a long time. And um, – that's what makes coaching special. That's what makes the game of football special. And so I'm excited for him, um, you know, to continue to grow, continue to get better, have some fun, stay healthy, and, and you know, me help him along the way. So it's been great. Um, you know, Michael, as well as the other quarterbacks, they're like family. You know, I've known him so long. And so um, I love those guys. Michael's, you know, included in that group. And so it's been great. Zach, the Matt Weaver. Coach, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, good. Appreciate the time. Um, you've you probably kind of touched on this in, in different ways, but um, you know, one of the things that, that everybody's I know adjusting to without the schedule is not having the non-conference games to kind of fine tune certain things. And I know you guys always take those games seriously, but to maybe experiment a little bit, make some mistakes, iron some some things out. Just 
I guess, it, do you do you approach, you know, this preseason prep any differently, the preseason scrimmages and things like that any differently, knowing that kind of once the season starts, you're going straight into the deep end and it's an all-conference schedule, there's, there's no let-up, I guess? Certainly, I think the level of urgency is high. Um, you know, to your point, you know, it's not like you had time in spring to experiment with any new schemes or new players and try to iron the details out in May and June before you hit, you know, the July, August months, you know, we're, we're getting ready to play here and, you know, not too long. So um, I think the urgency is high. Um, but, you know, the thing about sports and specifically this, I mean, it's fair for everybody. Everybody's on the same boat. So it's not like, you know, um, Penn State or the other teams in our league that they have, you know, other games to, you know, we're all going to start the same weekend. And, um, you know, we're going to do our very best to put our players in the best position so that they can play fast and compete and do the simple things well. And, um, you know, does it alter? I think everything has been altered to what a normal year would be, you know, as far as your planning and your development of your group and the positions. And, um, and so, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, we're taking it one day at a time and trying to do what's best for our players to just get a little bit better, you know, and, um, if, if we feel like we've grasped some concepts and the execution level is high, then maybe we can expand what we're doing and continue to grow, you know, but um, we want to make sure our players can do the simple things well, feel confident that they can play fast and compete. Um, and so that we're, we're trying to limit their thinking. We want them to play fast. Um, so that maybe alters up a little bit because as you've mentioned, you know, the time to, to prepare for your conference slate is small. You know, so, but like I said, it's the same for everybody. And so everybody's in the same boat and um, I'm sure everybody's excited for the opportunity to play. I just think it's good. It's just good for our kids. You know, they love to play. And um, I think this has been hard, you know, and, and um, I think everybody, I think across the conference, coaches and players, everybody's just excited for the opportunity to compete. Um, and certainly teams want to win, no doubt about it. But uh I'm going to enjoy the competition. I know our players are too. I have tremendous respect for the other schools and coaches and players in the conference. And uh, I'm excited for them too, to get an opportunity to do what they love to do. And, and we're certainly in the same boat and looking forward to that. All right, Matt and then Paul. Hey coach, how are the little ones doing? Doing good. It's actually, uh, um, it's my wife's birthday today. Uh, so just wanted to quick mention my wonderful wife, Sarah, and um, I love her very much. And, thankful to her and anything that's good about my children she's she's uh, directly <laughs> responsible for that so but uh, my family's doing well thanks for asking Matt. Yep. happy birthday to her um coach allen a couple times has mentioned aj barner as a as a young guy who's come in and, and been impressive i know obviously you coached tight ends last year i you know you were heavily involved in his recruitment um and he obviously big athletic guy but was really known more for defense in high school what did you see when you recruited him and what have you seen since he's come in that has you not excited not only as a former tight ends coach, but as OC that you can use him in your offense? Well, I think he has ideal size, um, just as measurables for what you would be looking for in the position. Um, you know, he was a little bit thinner. We had him here in the summertime. He was, I think, like 215. Um, I think he played his junior year like at 200 or maybe less. You know, he's just a tall, skinny kid. Um, but um, the thing I give AJ a ton of credit I just think AJ loves to play football. He genuinely loves the game and he's willing to do the things that are required to be a good player. So we knew he was going to have to get a little bit bigger. Um, just put some more mass on him and he has done that. And the reason he has is because he loves to play football. So I think he just had the measurables that we we're looking for just from a just pure physical standpoint at tight end. He was six, five plus, he was about 220 pounds. He's athletic. He can move, change directions. You see that him with him playing middle linebacker for his, his high school. And then the, the biggest thing for AJ, though, is – and I had an opportunity to go see him play in the fall – is that he was totally engaged and locked in. He was tough as nails, um, competitive, you know, all the makings of a good football player. So um, he's got to do it. He's got to prove it. He's got to earn it at this level. I think the group as a whole, I think some of the older guys, Peyton, Matt, that are doing a great job just bringing him along and explaining to him what's required. Um, and certainly I know AJ will benefit from their, uh, you know, mentorship because um, they care a whole bunch about the team and they want AJ to be the best player he can be so he can help our team. So um, we're excited about AJ and a lot of other young players and certainly the upperclassmen are doing a great job leading him and showing him the way. All right, Paul, and then we'll wrap up with DJ. Hey, Coach, thanks for the time. Yeah, no problem. He 
you're the third OC in as many seasons, but you were probably one who was the most familiar with that offense with your tenure there. With the offseason the way it's been and the group's constantly changing in terms of players, is there a hindrance much or is it softened due to your experience with the program? And then who are some young guys who have looked good to you so far? You say a hindrance as far as just um... – can you just elaborate on that question a little bit? Yeah. So being the being the third offensive coordinator in as many years, and, and the systems changing, terminology changing, from a player aspect, how how tough is that? Uh, and from a coaching aspect, how tough is that? Or I, is it softened because of your your experience with the program, and especially with Mike? Yeah, certainly. Um, some of the terminology and the language in which you speak, we've tried to keep somewhat consistent. If anything, we've tried to either streamline it and make it simpler, or if there's an addition to a concept or a term, then it would be totally new learning, which I think would be pretty uh, normal every year. You know, you're you're um, you're adjusting to that group, and so you know you might feature a run more or less year to year depending on the group you have. So we've tried to keep the communication and the lines of communication relatively the same. If anything, we've looked at ways to simplify it and make it easier. Um, in some instances, you know, in other instances, it literally is exactly the same because we want continuity. We want the players to be able to build and grow on that. Um, so we've been, you know, simple is better, you know, so the players can play fast. I think that's that's pretty standard no matter what year you're in and probably specifically this year even more so. And then what was your second question, Paul? Who are some of the younger, younger guys players? who yeah. have looked good to you? Um, I think Tim Baldwin has definitely taken a step in the right direction. Obviously, it's a, a, a deep and competitive room, but certainly from the time that he's gotten here to where he is now, he's make, definitely made strides. Um, you know, you mentioned A.J. Barner. I'm just kind of going position to position. As far as the young wide receivers, I think Javon Swinton is someone that has stood out. The other guys are learning and coming along, but certainly for a true freshman, I think Javon has done a nice job. Still has miles to go, and Coach Hurd is, is developing developing him um, a whole bunch, you know, each and every day. But he's shown some promise. Uh, not that the other players haven't, but he's definitely one that has stood out. Um, and then up front, I mean, I think you, I, I'm excited about our young old linemen. Um, you know, obviously you have some of the players that are in state here, you know, Randy Holtz and Cam Knight and Lou Wigington. Um, you know, Khalil Benson from Mississippi. Um, you know, I think all of it, you know, there's others too. You know, some of the young linemen, Brady Feeney, um, Luke Haggard, some of the guys are just getting here. Uh, I'm excited about, and um, they got a long, long way to go. Like I said, we just put the pads on for the first day today. So it's the first time we blocked another, you know, human being with a helmet and shoulder pads on. So we got miles to go for those young players. But um, I think as a staff, we're excited about some of the guys that we have signed and looking forward to the opportunity to coach them and develop them. Um, and obviously at my position, Dexter Williams, shows the ability to be a good player and, and um, has a great heart and a great mind and uh, um, a willingness to work. So we're excited about a lot of our young players. All right, DJ, last one. Hey, Coach, thanks for your time. Uh, you and Mike have both touched on your relationship, you know, early on in his career as uh, the quarterback's coach. But now that in, you're in your first season as the offensive coordinator, uh, what kind of things have you tried to implement to bring out the best in him on a day-to-day -day basis early on in the season? Yeah, I think the communication between the play caller and the quarterback is really important. Um, you know, I, I learned this um, when I was a GA from a, a, an offense coordinator that I worked for that did a fantastic job. He always used to tell the quarterbacks to know the intention of the play caller. You know, it's different in college football than in the NFL, right, as you guys well know. Like in the NFL, you know, the head coach gets to tell the quarterback in a walkie-talkie, like, hey, throw it to the flat or throw it away, click. You know, we don't get to do that in college football. So it's important that that communication is at an extremely high level throughout the week, throughout your prep, so that when you call a play, the quarterback knows what you are thinking, whether it be taking a shot, whether it be get an easy completion, whether it be, you know, check the ball, whatever it may be, it's important that the quarterback knows the intention of the play caller. And uh, certainly that relationship is new and that communication is important. So um, I've enjoyed that very much. And, um, you know, we'll continue to grow and, and work to get better at that as, as we go through the season. So, um, but it's been great. I enjoy coaching all the guys in that room. I enjoy, I, I told the group today, I, I like the group that we have. I'm excited about them. Um, 
and they got a good look in their eyes and they want to be they want to be a really good group and help the team win in any way that they can so we got to continue to to work to get that uh get that done and as coaches put our guys in the best position to be successful so i'm excited about the entire group and and the relationships that we're building thanks coach yep all right thanks nick